Howdy. Sketchbooks. Those of you who are long-term viewers will know that I can't go very long without getting my little hands all over one of these bad boys. And like I'm sure a lot of people, every year or so whenever I finish an old sketchbook, I begin a new sketchbook. Only with this one, about halfway through working on it, I said, you know what? I don't think so. And I moved on to working on a completely different sketchbook. But that one's almost done, so today we're going to continue in the tradition that I started with this one, and we are going to paint the front of the sketchbook. Because whenever I look at a blank sketchbook, I just see the void, the abyss, the nihilism of life. And I go, you know what, I think it would be better if there was like a cat on there or something. Um, but here's the thing. Those of you who know me well will know that I have a tendency to escalate things. I may have gone too far in a few places. And you know, one painting, that's so pedestrian. That's so two years ago. What I'm deciding to do today, instead of just painting one thing on my sketchbook, is do a bunch of little paintings on the cover of my sketchbook. Almost like a little miniature Pinterest that I can scroll through whenever I don't have my cellular telephone. Kind of like Tom on Parks and Recreation that one time. He got court ordered to stop using his phone. We're getting a little off topic here. I just wanna paint some cool stuff on my sketchbook. But to begin with, you guys can all give me a little clap, 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 round of applause because I've decided this time to do a little bit of planning. Instead of going in completely blind and mucking things up like I normally do, I'm actually gonna thumbnail out all the paintings on my iPad and procreate so I can figure out what I'm gonna paint on the cover of my sketchbook and where the heck I'm gonna put it, you know? Let's get started. Since my sketchbook is just filled with all of my comfort artwork. I also wanted to do comfort art on the front cover. So I brainstormed a bit about what I wanted to include and also asked you guys on my Instagram. And between the suggestions and my own ideas, I decided on a few OC doodles, Rose's sword, some concept art of the Monster Kids treehouse, and some miscellaneous things that I think would be fun to paint. And then I basically just collaged these ideas together very roughly on my iPad. Then I switched over to painting a layer of magenta for the base, like in my sketch. And once that was dry, I began sketching everything out. Now for those of you who are interested, this sketchbook is the Nina Cosford sketchbook. She reached out to me and sent it to me for free a couple of years ago, so thank you so much Nina. Took me long enough to finish it, huh? But I absolutely recommend it, so I'll have a link where you can purchase it in the description below. Getting back to the art, the pen sketches I did were very undefined and messy because the paint felt really strange to draw on top of for some reason, so I ended up keeping the sketches very rough and instead began by roughly blocking in layers of paint. Now before I get into my method, I do want to say we're going to do things a little bit differently today and I'm going to keep this voiceover a bit unscripted because I just wanted to do something a little bit more chill and relaxing so bear with me here because I'm not an organized person but today I just kind of want to talk about my method for painting so many tiny little paintings on one page and then my goals for traditional painting and digital art in general and then maybe later if I'm feeling a little crazy I might talk about some movies and tv shows that I'm really into at the moment. But my method for working on these paintings was all over the place. I'm kind of super rusty right now. It's probably been like months since I've actually painted, but I'm going to attempt to explain my method here. So whenever I do little acrylic paintings like this, I normally begin by blocking in like a mid-tone layer, almost like what I would do with digital art, having like a flat layer of color. And then on top of that, I'll go in and start adding the lighter values and the darker values and sort of build up layers of paint. I've said it, I don't know how many times recently on the channel, but I'm thinking more and more in, in terms of shapes and in terms of colors and silhouettes instead of just lines. Like lines don't compute with my brain the same way they used to for whatever reason. Like I just find it much more helpful to work in terms of shapes and actually bring some like form and dimension into my artwork rather than just using lines. I feel like sometimes looking at lines, especially flat line art, just to my brain, it's like looking at a blank sheet 
of paper. So putting something on the page where I can see the shape, I can see the form, I can see whether or not it's reading just really helps me to make decisions and figure out like whether or not something looks correct, whether or not a perspective is working. So that's one of the reasons why I opted for that on these little illustrations because I'm just not that fond of doing really detailed line work anymore. And I think that's the other reason why I am just really enjoying more painterly work recently because it just kind of helps me to produce better looking art. I have all the tools of detail and brush strokes and color at my disposal to be able to like give the viewer information about the form that I'm trying to draw. And I'm also also a maximalist, so it kind of just really caters to my tastes in general. But anyways, painting for me is a very organic process. I think you can see this, especially with the skin. That's normally what I start with. I sort of just go in and start finding the shapes within the color blocks that I've set out. And then I just start adding little bits of like rosiness on the cheeks and on the ears. And I just sort of slowly sculpt away at the form until I find the face within that I'm trying to draw. And whenever it comes to like hair and and clothing and armor and stuff like that. I sort of have a similar method to it, albeit a little bit less detailed, but I basically think in terms of like, what are the solid colors that would come out in like a digital art piece whenever I have all of my blend modes on and whenever it's completely done. And I just try to lay those colors down on basically one layer, like a one layer painting. It's kind of like skipping to my last step in digital art. Like I mentioned in the past, whenever I do digital, I normally work with uh, like a line art layer and a color layer and then shading layers but then whenever I get to the very end whenever I'm trying to make any serious tweaks or just generally add some good brush strokes and painting I'll go on top of all of that a lot of times and then I'll just start painting over things and I'll color pick the exact colors that the blend modes combine to like make the colors that I'm seeing so that's sort of how I work traditionally and I feel like depending on what the subject matter is my traditional painting can be a more detailed detailed or a little bit more cartoony. Like I think in these illustrations, the way they came out at the end, Rose's armor and some of Quintess's clothing ended up being pretty minimal, not rendered a whole lot, and then the faces were kind of the focal points, which to me, I'm okay with that because that's sort of where I want the viewer to look. I guess with where I'm at with traditional painting, it's a lot easier for me to detail like a face or something that's a detail shot, like by the end with the gems and the strawberries, than it is to detail something that's a smaller part of a bigger painting, like Rose's armor or Quintessa's clothing. I don't know exactly why that is. I just think it's easier for me to do that sort of thing digitally because I just have more tools at my disposal to detail things. But I guess now is a good time to transition into a few of the other things that I wanted to talk about today. One of which is that this project made me realize how much I miss traditional painting and how much I want to get back into it and how much I want to learn how to do more detail stuff so that I can paint like pretty girls with cool armor both digitally and traditionally you know one of the things that sparked this is that I was actually at a renaissance fair recently and I had a really interesting conversation with one of the artists who was selling their work there his name was Ed Beard and he's an artist that works primarily traditionally with acrylics and specifically with airbrushing and I just thought it was super cool that he was able to achieve such a great level of detail in his work whenever he was working traditionally and especially with acrylics because they're kind of infamous for being difficult to work with on larger pieces because they dry so quickly it's so difficult to blend it can be difficult to match colors it can be difficult especially on a really big piece that you need to work on over the course of a couple of weeks and those are things that I feel like I take for granted so much as a mostly digital artist because there is still this thing within me that is just so drawn to traditional art. I, there's no comparison in my brain between the quality of my sketches whenever I sketch digitally versus traditionally. Like I always consistently like what I put out in my sketchbook way better. My line quality and my control is just a lot better. And then even I think some of my paintings traditionally, they just have a quality to them that I just can't seem to replicate digitally. And then there's just this tactile thing about traditional art that hits the reward centers in my brain in just the right way to make me think like I have actually accomplished something which I definitely feel that with the digital as well but the fact that you have this physical object in front of you 
it just hits different. Like ever since I've finished the cover of the sketchbook, I just find myself looking at it so often. It's been on my side table and I just glance at it. And part of my brain is like, Whoa, wait, you did that? Cause I just, I really love how it came out. Like you'll see it at the end, but painting something nice traditionally just feels really good. Like I think back last summer, whenever I made that little sketchbook and then I did mostly paintings in it, I remember how fulfilling and how fun it was just to paint. And then whenever I was finished, have a tiny little book that's filled with mostly paintings. Whenever I look at it, I'm just like, oh, this is so nice. And this is a thing that exists in real space that will like live on and have a space in my home as long as I have it. And it might even get passed down to someone else someday. And that's like so cool. So like in terms of art goals with digital art, I think I'm clearly at a higher level. and. And at this time, I think I can go a little bit further with that, like professionally. I just recently did some professional work with my digital paintings that I think came out really well. And I was just really happy to see the progression between those and some digital illustrations that I maybe did in like May or something. I think I was able to improve a little bit between those two. I think I was able to improve a lot in terms of clarity and color and rendering. And overall, I just think the illustrations read really well, which is something that I've struggled with in the past, especially whenever you look at it as a thumbnail view. So clearly I want to keep that up and I want to continue that progression and that improvement, but I also don't want to like neglect my traditional art goals because it brings me a lot of relaxation and joy. And I also really want to try out some new mediums and some new materials soon, which of course kind of brings me to the topic of sketchbooks once again. Now this sketchbook, while I really like it, wasn't able to cater as much to crazy mediums. Like I tried using my paint markers in it a good bit, kind of warped the paper a lot. And I also tried using acrylic paint a few times and watercolors. And you know, I really like it, I do. But I find that the fact that I can't go crazy multimedia in it was a little bit constrictive for me. And I ended up focusing a lot on just ballpoint pen sketches, which even though they are basically my brand and sort of the main thing that I do, um, I got sort of bored with how the spreads ended up looking in the sketchbook, which is one of the reasons why it isn't technically done now because me being the extra person that I am, I have to go in and like add some color and some extra sketches to sort of like fill out some of the white space because it's bothering me. To preface this, I still like them, but yeah, I think the fact that the spreads in the end product of the sketchbook aren't quite as detailed and sort of crazy and colorful as some of my past sketchbooks was one of the things that led me to get a little bit burned out on sketchbooking and traditional art in general, because that's like one of the biggest reasons why I got into sketchbooking in the first place and why I enjoyed filling my first sketchbook that I fully filled so much. Yes. I did fill sketchbooks before that 13 year old. That was just the first one that I actually committed to filling with what I considered to be decent art. The other ones are sitting in my basement somewhere because I kind of mistreated them. They're falling apart and I don't want to be reminded of my failure. Anyways, I like to experiment in my sketchbooks and I also am ridiculously obsessive about doing pretty full page spreads with somewhat polished artwork and sketches and making it really colorful and arranging everything so that it looks intentional. It just tickles that sweet spot in my brain to see a bunch of smaller art pieces come together to make a spread that is a larger art piece and have colors that all look nice together. It's really just organized chaos. It is a maximalist dream. I love it. But yeah, it's just something that I've kind of been missing with my most recent sketchbooks because as I mentioned at the top of this video, I did basically half fill a sketchbook before I started working on this one and some of those pages just they don't quite hit uh, my art kind of suffers from style inconsistency because I was having a weird moment there where I was floundering between different art styles and I wasn't really committing to anything. And even though I like some of those sketches, the completionist in me just would like something a little bit more put together and polished, even though these are my sketchbooks we're talking about and they're not really that. But I guess if you can imagine something that is below the standards of what my 
usual chaos sketchbooks are. That's why I wasn't satisfied with it. So I needed to take a break from her, but I will go back and finish that one eventually. But I think part of me just needed to go and complete a sketchbook that I generally liked so that I can move on from one that I was a little bit frustrated with. But now that I'm about to finish this current one, I want to move on to probably next a true multimedia sketchbook so that I can really just dive into whatever medium I want to use. Like I want to try out more colored pencils. I of course want to dive deeper into acrylic painting and I miss using watercolor so much. I don't know why I stopped. I think my best guess is that the palette I was using got super muddied up and kind of disgusting and hard to use and my water brushes probably need to be cleaned or replaced so it just got harder to make art with it so I stopped doing it in favor of other mediums but there really is no excuse I could very easily clean or replace that watercolor palette so I definitely want to do more work with that and also do more stuff with markers. I have been using markers a little bit in this sketchbook and it's been really fun, but uh, most of the markers that I have are alcohol based, which if you aren't familiar, normally bleed through every type of paper there is unless you're using specifically marker paper. And they also don't play well with my ballpoint pens, which is in fact a deal breaker for me. And I'm just not a micron girl at the moment so I would need to find some water-based markers that I can have fun and play with. For the most part for water-based markers I just use Crayola Super Tips. They're really fun to play with but I just find that I'm not really able to make full art with them. I normally just use them to make bleeds and sort of just fill in shapes and add light colors to things nothing super involved mostly just because i wish they had more color variation like i really like developing really nice pretty looking color palettes for my sketchbook pages and especially use sort of like lighter pastel tones whenever i'm shading in little doodles of characters which is i guess why using watercolors was so nice it's just with the thinner sheets of paper it gets all warpy and then all of that work that you put in to make your sketch look clean is just down the drain because now your paper is warped and it shows. So I'm hoping that I can find a multimedia sketchbook that will take heavier mediums like watercolor and acrylic paint, but also that plays well with ballpoint pens and doesn't have too much tooth to the paper because I just don't really like that. So if you have recommendations, please leave them in the comments below. I need help. And if you're from a company watching this and you want to send me a sketchbook, <laughs> well, my email address is in the description there, bud. Anyways, to finish us off, because I promised some television rambles, I don't have time for a whole lot, but for anyone who cares and who's been watching this long, um, I have been super into Kenobi, The Owl House, and Stranger Things Volume 4 recently. All of them are quite good, and I'm just eating it up over here. Especially Stranger Things Season 4, it's so good. I haven't found a single person who thought it was like mediocre or that it's not delivering because it absolutely is. Everyone's been talking about Episode 4 with Max because it was amazing and we know it, but can we also talk about the choreography in the Gunfight one -er from Episode, I don't know, was it 5 or something like that? It was just beautifully done, very inventive. I was on the edge of my seat and super impressed the whole time I was watching it. So that's another standout for the season for me. And also, spoilers if you haven't seen it. Spoilers, pause the video. But I thought the whole twist with like Vecna and Henry in one was also really cool. Clearly a retcon but I think they did a pretty good job of sliding that in. And I'm also rewatching season three right now because I'm curious if they're like trying to pick up on any threads they left in season three. And whenever this stuff happens with Billy near like the beginning of season three, you can hear sort of the same grandfather clock ticking, which is sort of present throughout the entire series so far. But just the way the interaction was staged, I feel like you can almost interpret it as like, I don't know, maybe Vecna was involved in this. Obviously, it was Mind Flayer shenanigans, but it just feels good to see these plot lines sort of 
follow through on even if they weren't completely planned from the beginning. Really tight writing, really solid season so far, although the one thing that I'm kind of missing from the season that I thought sure they would keep following up on is some of the upside down stuff whenever it comes to Will. This kid straight up got possessed in season two and I expected the plot thread from season three where he can still kind of feel the effect of the upside down to carry over into season four. I just don't really feel like we got that. Maybe there's a reason. Maybe we'll see a little bit more of that in the last half of the volume. But right now, I just feel like our boy Will is kind of getting sidelined. And that makes me sad because I feel like he's a very important character. He kind of was the inciting incident for the entire show. So, yeah. And before we wrap up... Kenobi, Kenobi, Kenobi. What is there to say about this show that hasn't already been said? You know, some people really like it and are super into it. Other people just cannot get past the glaring mistakes in the writing of this show. Some of it is quite sloppy. And if you notice by me saying that, I'm one of the little annoying brats that, you know, occasionally has issues with this show's writing. But overall, I do like it. I think it's a good show, and I absolutely went rabid over episode 5, uh, my favorite episode so far. And I'm also on the team of people who's kind of like, yeah, like, episode 5 was cool enough. I'm willing to forgive a little bit of the shenanigans in the past couple of episodes, but also at the same time, it's just like, okay, what are you doing, you guys? Why does this show with the legacy characters have TV level writing? Like, I get that it's a TV show, but if you watch The Mandalorian or some of the other shows that they've put out, the quality just doesn't feel like it's there in Kenobi, both in terms of like visually and with the score and purely with the script in the plot. Some of it just feels like weird, awkward, like they didn't really have an idea for the story. So they're like, yeah, I guess you could like make that happen there. Um, I just feel like they really dragged it out when we were basically we got to the nitty gritty in episode five like what the show is supposed to be about like i actually really like the whole uh the resistance is sort of placing jedi refugees thing i think that's a cool idea and especially if obi-wan was sort of snapped back to his senses and thought oh actually maybe i should help these people you know so that they don't die that could have been a cool idea for the show I don't think the Leia thing was awful for being in the show at all. Like, rescuing Leia could have been a decent inciting incident. Uh, doing it twice, a little bit weird. I don't think that was super worth it, even if we did get to see the Fortress Inquisitorious, which is the funniest name for an evil fortress in the world. That is some... Dr. Doofenshmirtz level nonsense right there, which I respect, but also, what are we doing? We're just trying to reference, like, Jedi Fallen Order at this point, okay? And I see you, but is it necessary? Anyways, I know most of you who are here right now don't care, and if I talk about this more, it's going to be in a sketchbook session or in a screen cap redraw episode for Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is a series that I'm hoping to start soon on the channel, just redrawing screen caps from different shows and movies and talking about them. My content is literally all over the place. Holy crap. But yeah, at the end here, I did a lot of tweaking and touching up because like I said, that's usually a big part of the end process for all of my illustrations because I tend to work very messy sometimes. And sometimes I just like to go in and polish everything up, clean up my lines and my edges and stuff like that. So I especially went in with some white deleter manga ink and added highlights and accents to things, which I think really helps bring everything together. It just looks so beautiful. It's so satisfying. And of course, I also went in and touched up everywhere the pen was still showing through, especially on the magenta bits. But with that, the cover is completely done and it's time for the reveal.
welcome to the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching till the very end. This has been one of my favorite projects that I've done in recent memory just because it was so fun and relaxing to just like paint for a really, really long time and just enjoy myself. It's actually been a while since I've painted anything. So I was a little rusty at first, as you could probably see in the recording. I was sort of floundering for a bit, just trying to find my footing and figure out what I was doing. But then whenever I got into the groove, I had like such a good time and it's reminded me how much I just miss painting. So maybe look out for some painting content in the future. But thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for a sketchbook tour. Hopefully next month, we'll see how nitpicky I am with finishing it up. And if you would like to support me further, you can like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. When you do, you become an honorary leaf because I wouldn't be a pile of leaves without you guys. But now if you'll excuse me, I am very busy. I have to go and hyper fixate on a little whiny space child. That one. Bye. They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand.